protocol is clear. We bring her in or we bring her down. Do you have any idea who this woman is? What she's done for this country? Doesn't that mean anything to you? Should it? Real CIA women we met would have to find ways to alter themselves. And yet, somehow, those changes had to feel organic to what she's doing and what's possible. Step through, please, sir. And yet, be strong enough that, that visually they're fun to watch. Evelyn goes through lots of different changes in the movie to, to try to survive. It sets up the film in a good way, I think, to start with that very conservative American girl. Are you doing this on company time? It's my anniversary, and I want it to be perfect. Angie and I arranged the blonde original look for Saul, a sweeter, softer, more innocent look. <laughs> And then when Chenkov comes, it's such a contrast to Salt. When you suddenly have this dark-haired Russian spy. They're both the same length to start with. The idea is that she's dyed her hair. Yes, Miss Hernandez. There's another character. She's Puerto Rican. The Puerto Rican, yeah, well, that's just a hat. A lot of the people in the CIA say, well, we just pull our hair back and change our base color, or we just put a contact in. So we tried some looks just have contact and teeth, but everything else is kind of the same. We wanted to make sure it wasn't just, you know, you turn around and she's got a whole new look. make it more muscular, and also changes her uh, cheekbone shape, too. Next will be a forehead. Am I getting nose hair? No. <laughs> <laughs> How much of a man am I feeling? I get, like, ear hair, nose hair. Nice. This forehead piece changed her eyebrow shape. It kind of bring down a little bit more and uh, make her eyebrow a little more male-like. And this is the last piece we put on. This is the chin, kind of give a crisp chin. And after face makeup is done, uh, Colleen will put this wig on her. The wig comes with longer hair, and I cut it and style it. It was the sort of look that evolved that would be flattering to her and um, the most masculine, without it looking too trendy and trying to keep it warm military but also keeping it slightly longer for when it comes back as being a female again. You know, i.e. when she has the fights and things and it all gets looser. That it still looks a female. OK. The last thing is this hand we have to put on her because her hand is really skinny and really female-ish. So this is actually like a hand cast of myself. This one goes over hand, hand, like this. Of course, this is too big for me, but uh, change her hand and also change her skin tone, too. So it would be like that. And the great, great thing is, uh, it, you know, you can move like a normal hand, and she can, you know, grab and do whatever she wants to. It was weird. This is a woman that we all dream about for our femininity. And then to see her as a man. Yeah, it should be back, so it doesn't seem like... 
down there. Down there. Okay. I think there's something Freudian about, you know, what your woman is, what my man is, and what our imagination creates. My man was suddenly very cocky and very flirty on set. I was very confident as a man. The woman grew balls. <laughs> I was enjoying it, but I think I creeped a lot of people out, which is fun.